Let's say we have a sphere on top of an incline and it's rolling down. And the problem is asking us to find the acceleration of the center of mass of the sphere as it's rolling down the incline. So let's write down all we know. We know from Newton's second law that force, vector sum of all forces, in this case the x direction, taking the surface of the incline to be the x, is equal to the mass of the object times its acceleration. Now, I don't want to concentrate too much on resolving forces into components, but when, if we were to do that, the weight of the object would be given by mg, there's an angle right here, theta, mg sine theta of the incline, minus, now since it's rolling, there has to be a force of friction because friction is causing it to roll down, minus the force of friction, is equal to mass times acceleration. Now, the force of friction will, uh, would be given by mg cosine theta. So therefore, it would be mg sine theta, its weight, minus the force of friction, mg cosine theta. Now again, if you want to uh, see how you resolve the forces into components, watch my other videos. So where were we at? Mg sine theta, the, the weight minus the force of friction is equal to mass times acceleration. So we can cancel out the m's right here and we get g sine theta minus g cosine theta is equal to a. So that's that. Now let's write down all we know from rotational dynamics. We know that the net torque on an object is equal to force times the radius. But it's also equal to moment of inertia times its angular acceleration. So, um, as I mentioned before, friction is the one causing friction is the torque on the object. Therefore, the force of friction causing the torque would be given by mg cosine theta. This is the force, mg cosine theta. This represents the force times the radius is equal to I alpha. Now for the moment of inertia is different for every object. In this case it's a sphere therefore according to the textbook the moment of inertia of a sphere is through the center of mass is given by 2 over 5 2 fifths m r squared. And we also know that um, radius times angular acceleration is equal to tangential tangential acceleration so therefore we can solve for this we can solve for angular accel acceleration so it'll be tangential over radius now let's plug i and alpha into this equation when we plug in i will be two fifths um, mass times radius squared times a tangential over radius. Now from this equation there's a lot of things we can cancel out. First of all the m's go away and the radiuses go away. So now we're, we're left with g cosine theta is equal to 2 fifths a tangential. tangential. So now we can plug this 2 fifths a back to this equation. We basically, we're substituting g cosine theta with this. So back to this again, it will be uh, g sine theta minus, for g cosine theta, we're substituting 2 fifths a. 2 fifths a is equal to a. Now remember, this is acceleration tangential, so this was always acceleration tangential, but here we go. So now we, now we can just use basic, basic algebra to solve for A. We're going to get G sine theta is equal to, um, uh, this will come down to 2 fifths A plus A 
So g sine theta is equal to 7 fifths a. Oh, there we go. And we divide by 7 fifths acceleration tangential, tangential, excuse me, is equal to 5 over 7 g sine theta. So that's how you solve it. So this process can be can be used to solve for any object rolling down an incline. The only difference would be in the moment of inertia. So in this case, I I assume this was a sphere, and but it could also be a cylinder or, or any other object that rolls. The difference would be in the moment of inertia. But the process of solving for the the acceleration of center of mass would pretty much be the same. So, there you have it.